the hardest part about going to regenerative or planting green is figuring out how to adjust the planter. I mean, you have to check it every single field. There's no standard. There's no, you're never going to run the same down pressure. You're never going to have it set the same because you can plant the same mix on the same day. And if a field has a lot of nitrogen, you get a lot of cereals. And if the field is low in nitrogen because your corn crop was good, you get a lot of legumes. Well, a clover field, you plant completely different than a cereal rye field. And regardless of the mix or when you plant it, and then you throw in different planting dates, different fertility, dip following different crops, every field's completely different. Um, so that's that's what makes the challenge. You have to enjoy it. But we, you know, we pull in every field and we check behind the planter every single time we pull in a field because every field's going to be different. I'm Michael Legg. Uh, I've worked here at Harbor View Farms for almost five years now. Um, I'm running the bean planter today. It is uh, our bean planters are 60 foot. So that's 36 and we plant 20 inch rows. So this planter's 36, 20 inch row spacings. We farm corn and beans and wheat. All our corn and beans we plant green. So we get into some high residue situations and we're also all no-till. So a lot of times we get into a lot of corn stalks that are left over um, as well as wheat stubble. So this one's planted into a lot of high residue corn. Um, so we've been through a bunch of different iterations of row cleaners. Um, we started out with the ones that were OEM and they were uh, a shark tooth, but they didn't intertwine. And the problem was we had a lot of tangles with them. They would always be wrapping up. So we found these, these are made by Martin and they actually run into each other and keep e one keeps the other one clean because they hit in the front. And then they've also got a back plate built into them that keeps them from tangling. So as the stuff starts to wrap, the, the hairy vetch and whatnot, these back plates will keep it cut and keep it clean. And it's very seldom that they wrap up. You know, we might get something every once in a while. We also like these. Um, these are also made by Martin. The, the bracket that holds them, we like because it's got two linkages. So it's got parallel linkage, similar to like old, you know, kind of when the, the revolution of drills was when they went to parallel linkage from single linkage. And I think it provides a lot smoother ride for the unit because um, it's kind of floating as opposed to just as a steady impact. So this row cleaner, like I said, the, the best part of this row cleaner is the fact that it's intertwined and has this on it so it doesn't tangle. Finding a row cleaner that doesn't tangle when you're planting green is the hardest thing to do. That's the, that's what you really have to have. Um, but then these also have this air cylinder back here. So if we need to put more pressure on them from the cab, we can adjust it or we can pick them up. There's some conditions where we don't really like row cleaners and sometimes you're better off just not running them. So we can just pick them right up and they just don't even spin on the ground. They just ride on top of it. And then we just let the, the disc openers do their job. Um, but typically we have them floating, usually 10, 20 pounds of pressure, down pressure on them. But if we get into real big green stuff, sometimes we have to run 40, 50 pounds of pressure to, to really get that stuff moved out of the way. Um, as you move back, we started out with OEM gauge wheels. They were a little bit wider. I think they were four inches. And the problem was since these are narrow, it's hard to get it cleared enough to make it so that the, the, the gauge wheel is riding on soil or at least riding in something that's that's consistent. So we went to these, they're a little bit narrower, a little bit tougher. We went to the spoked arm on these because sometimes the conditions are a little wet or wetter than we'd like, um, but we plant. So this kind of helps keep them clean. And then on the back, uh, we're putting in uh, fertilizer in the furrow. So this is running off the tank, goes in the trench. Then the back, this is OEM. So this is kind of the standard case, but usually they have a round disc here, like a disc blade. And we've since changed that to all these spike teeth. We found that they're sturdier, plus they work the ground a little bit. And then normally they would just have a flat uh, four by four tire in the back. And we found that a lot of times we weren't getting good trench closure with it. Um, so we, uh, I think somebody sent me the plans for them, but we actually ended up making this bracket that bolts on. And then we put these two, um, almost looks like a standard closing wheel behind it. So we get the trench cut here, cuts all the living roots, which kind of gives us something to work with. And then this, these will close it up. So this is pretty well what we've settled on. We got a couple different gauge wheels or closing wheels we're still playing with, but these seem to be kind of the ones we like now. They're inexpensive. They ru ru go right on the plastic ones and then uh, work the ground a little bit, but they're also aggressive enough to really close the trench. Um, we still have a little, we still get some tangles in here. Uh, that's why we went to these. We had twisters on last year and they were tangling a lot. And I think a lot of that was because we've got 
an abnormal mount from the outside as opposed to it's supposed to be from the inside typically. Um, so with this outside mount, we found these with this curved tine on top as opposed to being a spoke tine, um, really tangled up a lot less. Not, it didn't eliminate it, but it made it much more tolerable. I'm Lee Bigelow. I work for Harbor View Farms. Do most of the work on the, on the planters we have here. Cool. These here are um, crimpers. Um, they're from Yetter. They're pretty much just a, nothing but a stalk um, devastator, stalk devastators. We add them through a planter to be able to push and crimp the tall cover that we run through um, in the spring, the green tall. It does a pretty good job laying it flat. Um, it will come back up some of the cover crop, but most part of it, it will stay flat and lay flat. We got the cylinders, it pushes it down. I can also put pressure on the cylinders, but I can't put too much. We have to find that happy medium between the pressure on the down pressure for the crimpers versus the down pressure on the planter because they will fight against one another. So we just kind of run a low pressure on these to kind of get it to lay down and then let the planter do itself. These are your road cleaners. Um, they're Martins. We run them, we really like them in the tall residue. They do a good job. They, they break the ground a little bit and makes the uh, disc openers don't have to cut as hard. We have scrapers on the back to keep them from the tall cover from tangling up on them. Um, we've had this set up for probably at least five years on this set. We had a longer arm, but then we went back to the the dual linkage here um, in order we had to change the style we had in order to get the crimpers to come on here because not when they fold it up they would hit it so that's what we decided on them here it's all a partner for we're just running a standard uh, v disc opener um, they're right side by side and make a v here we're running on the side would be um, conceal system fertilizer system they hang in there like that and they go in between the gauge wheels uh, we're running two by two on the fertilizer. Um, we're just splitting it um, half on this side, half on this side. If you see here in the tail, the feet seed firmer, we're running a pop-up fertilizer through that. Um, we just actually installed, we've been running some other things like fungicide and stuff through them years ago, but last year we switched this over to just straight pop-up. Um, we put a new system on the Surefire system. Back here we're running on the closing wheels, I'm running a dual paddle wheel um they're yetters we've had these probably on here for probably about roughly eight or nine years and we really like these they don't tangle too much in the cover um, but this is what we run on the john deere on this planter here along with a firming wheel behind it um, when you get the grounds right and um, has a little bit of fluffiness to it this firming wheel packs it down and makes a really nice seed bed for it this here is another uh, type of closing we've, we've been trying for the last three or four years. Um, these are made by Martin. He sent them out for us, Mr. Martin did, so we could try them. Um, they cut the ground up, they close the trench really well. You have to run a, a paddle wheel behind them, a firming wheel. And also on this firming wheel, you'll see a, a death gauge. You have to check the gauge or set it to where you think is right. I usually run them in the ground about an inch. Um, but if you don't set this, they will run in the ground a lot deeper than you want them to run. They'll, they'll just pluck the corner out of the ground. So that's why the death gauge is on here, just to keep them from digging in the ground, because they will dig in the ground. But these do um, a really good job if the cover is really, really tall and thick, and you can't get the disc them just doesn't cut the dirt enough or cut the grass away from your road cleaners. This here will cut it and I'll see push the trench together for you and close and give you a good seed to soil contact. We are running uh, pneumatic air pressure on the down pressure for the um, whole planter system. I can adjust that on the go to keep pressure on here. Um, the easy way to explain, if I set the monitor for um, say 100 pound down pressure when I'm getting in the field to set the planter down, it's like putting a bag, a 100 pound bag on top this, on top this planter, the row unit, it puts 100 pound pressure on the row unit. Or I can go up to max is like 360, 375. I normally run around anywhere between 180 and 220 on both types of soils. It all depends on how, um, last year we ran into a dry spell and I had almost all the pressure I could get onto it just to get it in the ground. But uh, normally run around about 200 pound of pressure all the time or less. We try to run as less as we can so it doesn't put compaction on the, um, inside your seed trench. Mm -hmm.